Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker, Lois Kofi. Each week, it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. Well, all right, all right, all right, everyone. Happy Friday. It's that time again, although it's been two weeks uh, since our last live episode of Healthy and Wealthy and Wise. As most of you know, I was on a holiday and actually got to explore and travel and be away. So I'm excited to relaunch and kick off the show with an amazing guest. And I'll be introducing her in a second. So I always like to start out with a reminder that this show is for you designed to be 30 minutes of action packed information, inspiration, education, equipping you to be your highest and best version of yourself. So if you're tuning in live or on the replay, comment below. You're going to have the ability to ask questions if you're on the live. So that's the value of being on the live. And if you want to um, and you see value, please hit the share button because we know a lot of people could benefit from this message today. So I'm going to go ahead and step out of the way of greatness here and introduce my awesome guest, my new friend I met because of the pandemic. I, I was talking before the show that I've met so many cool people from Canada, so many people from all over the world because of this 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 pandemic thing that has allowed me to connect with people globally. So I'm super excited to have Sufit here. She's the um, basically best award-winning author um, of Step Into the Spotlight, a guide into getting noticed. Super excited to talk more about that today. She's a former lawyer, um, so it'll be fun to hear her journey and story of how she got to be where she is. And she's also been in Entrepreneur Magazine and Toronto Star Award uh, and and really, really well known all over. She's got a huge uh, group on LinkedIn. That's how I found her. And she's also an in-demand keynote speaker, radio and TV show guest, seminar leader, and mom, although in her own words, she points out that she's not currently taking on any new clients in that last category. So I, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. If you guys are tuning in again, comment below hashtag live. And uh, why don't you take it away, Sufit, and tell us your story, how you got to be where sure. you are today. Sure. Just before I do a little correction, um, there is no Toronto Star Award, as far as I know. Uh, just I was featured in the Toronto Star, and and it's an award-winning book, and those are separate thoughts. But anyway, just don't want anybody to get misinformed. Um, so I was all my life wanting to be kind of an actress, a singer, uh, but my parents kind of wanted me to be more practical, so I became a lawyer, a civil litigation lawyer. One that was on the dean's list at law school, and. Uh, did that for about 10 years, popped out four baby girls in four years, boom, 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 boom. The oldest was not four and a half when the youngest was born. And I woke up one morning kind of with that Peggy Lee, you know, is, is that all there is moment and said, you know what, I want to follow my dream, which was to be a singer actress. I ended up being a comedian as well on a sitcom for four years, uh, did, you know, comedy, stand up on, on national TV, did a music CD, promoted it to make top album lists on radio around the world, folk and world. And during the promotion of all that stuff, I learned how to promote, right? Like I didn't know how, right? So I read books and I learned and whatever. And the next thing you know, people started coming to me and saying, Sufit, how did you do that? How did you get a full page article? How did you get a national TV documentary about you? How did you do this? How did you do that? So next thing you know, um, I started coaching people to follow their dreams and to step into the spotlight doing it because you know what, it's not enough to follow that dream if you can't figure out how to monetize it then, you know, uh, for kids to feed, right? And it's, it's generally advisable to feed them more than once a week or so, I was told. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of was my journey. And then after a few years of coaching entrepreneurs and professionals, lawyers, and, you know, people, uh, in, in different industries where there are a lot of people doing the same thing, people said to me, Sufit, can't you just like write a book? So um, I wrote a book, this uh, Step Into the Spotlight, A Guide to Getting Noticed, and um, started promoting that book. And then I started thinking, well, I really should gather together some kind of a community around this idea. And I was sitting there one January 1st, eight years ago, thinking, okay, what do I do differently this year? And I just launched this community kind of on a whim because for me, LinkedIn was boring and too professional and like, I'm not really professional, right? 
So I did it, and now we're almost 14,000 members, and they're authors, speakers, coaches, experts, influencers, media, exactly the kind of people that I want to surround myself with, that I coach, that, you know, people like you, um, happy that you're a member of our community as well. And that, that brings us to uh, the lowest coffee podcast. <laughs> I love coffee. it. It's yeah. it's Kofi. It's all good. No worries. Well, tomato. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually two feet on my end. So we're even. I know. I was going to say tomato, tomato. <laughs> so thank you for keeping me keeping me honest. I love your name. I, I It's so unique. I don't know if you want to share, um, you know, the it background of that. In I mean, hummingbird in Hebrew. I was born in Jerusalem and the Wildlife Society was naming birds and they named a sunbird or a hummingbird of two feet because it collects nectar of honey, which is two and they wanted to name me something sweet, so that's what it was. To I love it. I've never met another one, so um, that makes you unique and amazing. So how did you go from being a, a lawyer, I mean, and, and being seen and discovered and stepping into the spotlight? I mean, there's so many people out there right now who are, are I think, I, I hear from different people, like, how do you be seen? How do you be paid? How do you set yourself apart? Do you have any, like, quick um, pointers or best next steps for people to get started on that? Well, the answer to your question, do I have any quick? No, because it's not quick. I mean, I can tell you quickly, no, and that's the easiest thing that I can say quickly, um, because it took me 288 pages in the book to, you know, to explain what you do. But, but, but that said, the thing to do first when you're considering embarking on an entrepreneurial journey is to try to figure out you know, what's different about you because everybody wants to be better. I, I had clients once, um, actually, I shouldn't say once because this happens all the time. Um, you know, when I say why you, they say because we're better. And I'm saying, you know what, better isn't better, different is better. So mm -hmm. you have to really figure out what is your narrow, narrow thing that you do. So, for example, you know, I've coached therapists before, but I had one therapist who found out after. Um, 25 years of marriage that her husband was gay when she started focusing on that you know for her therapy to coach either the spouses or the or the, the people themselves that were coming out um, then she had a niche you know or um, if you uh, are a, a relationship you know um, let's say therapist well why not focus on relationships between prison guards and their prisoners you know, mm. or I mean, I know it sounds very narrow and it sounds like what kind of a stupid niche is that to feed? I mean, like prison guards and their prisoners. Yeah, well, there are a lot. Of, I mean, it, 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 it turns out that it happens that there are a lot of times that or a priest, let's say a priest falling in love with somebody and they're not supposed to marry or, you know, something that or, or I had somebody in my group who was coaching not only relationships, not only anger management, not only physicians who need anger management. But, you know, physicians who were like always angry, always aggressive kind of, and he has programs for them. So it's not a program for physicians. It's not a program for anger management, but it's a, so if you can marry a specific topic and a specific audience, then we're starting to, we're starting to cook here that, that maybe you will get noticed. So that, that, that will make it more quick. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you really want the quick recipe, it'll make it way more quick than if you just put out your shingle and say, I'm a coach. Amen to that. Yeah, there's the, that old phrase. I know it's cliche, riches in niches, um, for sure. And I know a lot of people know my story. I, I did never, I never had an online business before April 2020. And so I kind of freaked out, like, how do I become an online sales coach? But it, to your point, it took me a while. It probably took me three to six months to really narrow down. And then guess what, guys? the income increased. So can you maybe touch on that? Because there's some people, and I don't mean to sound negative, but there's some people who get kind of like this scarcity mentality, like, no, I can, I can help all of these people. I can do all of these niches, right? I don't want to narrow down because I might miss out on something. Uh, I well, don't know if the, yeah, yeah. Sorry. The, sorry to interrupt you, but get over it. Um, <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, ironic, I mean, 30 minutes, what do you want from me? That's kind of the ironic thing here, that if you don't do what you just said, if you don't get narrow, you are going to miss out on everybody because nobody's going to know where to find you and you're not going to know where to find them because ultimately somebody's got to find somebody, right? 
or else you're not going to get clients. I mean, if you're an expert in what you do and you're sitting in your living room and you're, you're sitting there with all your millions of expertise, all your, I don't know if you count expertise, millions, but whatever it is, nobody's going to know you exist. But if you get out there and you want to find these people or better yet, way better yet, if you want them to find you, you've got to be that lighthouse to use a cliche. You've got to, you've got to figure out what is it that your sign says. Right. So that people can find you. If your sign says coach, well, like you can't walk three steps without tripping over 17 and a half coaches. Right. And your brother in law is a coach and your uncle's studying coaching. Right. So and they've all got certifications. I mean, you know, who cares about your certifications if you don't have clients and if you don't have a niche and if you don't have an audience, you don't have anything. So, Amen. Yeah. So how do you do that you figure out what you know and figure out who's interested in that and what you're good at and you see where they all go together so for example let's say you're selling steaks which apparently is a big thing in the u.s we don't do it here but by mail order they sell steaks right you're great at what you do and you've got a great message because everybody says yeah you got to have a great 30 second infomercial and yeah i agree with you i teach a whole four week course about 30 seconds but that's not going to help you if you do your 30 seconds in front of the Vegan Society of America, right? So you've got to find the intersection between your niche, right? Selling steaks by mail is nice and nichey, but, but, but you've got to find, well, who, who wants that kind of thing? It's not going to be at the Vegan Society. So um, that's, kind of, that's kind of what you do. So I don't know if you're, you know, a sales coach for fishermen, or if you're a sales coach for, um, you know, how to sell by subliminal messages or how to sell in your sleep or, or how to sell in a language that you don't speak or how to sell um, by uh, appealing to people's fear. So, for example, um, you know, let's say you're selling a weight loss uh, kind of, you know, fitness or weight loss or whatever. You could um, try to take on the big weight loss industry, or you could just have one idea, which is fit into your skinny jeans by Friday. Or your one idea could be something like um, fit into your, uh, you know, the same clothes that you wore in high school to go to your high school reunion or fit or or how to make your ex wish he weren't your ex, you know, by losing 10 pounds. By So if you if you tap into the emotion, if you tap into the real motivation, right? If somebody goes to lose weight, it's not for no reason, right? It's, I mean, mm -hmm. it could be for health reasons. It could be because somebody just passed away in their family. It could be because they just got rejected. It could be rejected personally. It could be rejected in business. It could be they looked in the mirror and they don't like how they look. But if you can figure out that exact mm -hmm. motivation, that exact prompt, that exact trigger, and, and which goes back to your earlier question, why can't you just market to everybody? Because if I talk about fitting into your skinny jeans by Friday, but I'm talking to somebody who just, you know, somebody had a heart attack. They, they don't care about skinny jeans. They just want to survive, right? Somebody else is only seven pounds overweight, right? Which the truth is they're not overweight. They're just, you know, it's an extra bag of potatoes. That's not a big deal. Get over it. Um, but if they... Uh, if you talk to them the same way, if you talk about healthy eating and balance, if they don't want to know from balanced meals, they want to, how do I get into my damn skinny jeans? That's right. Funny. Yeah. So yeah. you got to speak their language and you got to, and you got to try to try to resonate with what their motivation ultimately is. And that's why going back to your point, Lois, you can't speak to everyone because not everybody has the same interest and not everyone speaks the same language. Hmm. Amen to that. Yeah, I, I don't um, know where to find them. Yeah, I, I talk about that too. I've some of my clients hear me say all the time: the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. You got to know the the who, who the who the heck are you serving? I just want to give a shout out before we move on. Um, we have some some people here from California. Thanks, Elizabeth, for tuning in. Just want to give you a shout out, Sean from Minnesota, and then Elizabeth did share with us Sufit. So you sh she says you two rock so much sass in the house. <laughs> I love it. And I just did a search. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I just did a search too, and I, I'm sure you knew this already, Sufi, because we met on LinkedIn, and I, I, the stats are mind blowing. There's over 6.4 million coaches on LinkedIn alone when you do a search, and oh, yeah. the um, ICF had some kind of stat. The average coach post pandemic 
because of not maybe adapting to the technology, their income went from like about averaging 45 grand a year down to 37. There is no way that the average coach was making 45 or 37. I mean, I, excuse me, ICF, I don't want to dispute your figures, but I don't believe any of that because like, I, I'm sorry, I do, you know, and, and don't sue me for saying this because I'm just talking about my belief. I'm a former yes. lawyer. So disclaimer, 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 but I don't believe any of that because most coaches aren't making anything. I mean, you have a few, yeah, if you average out a, a handful of people are making a lot and 99% are making nothing and you average it, it's going to, maybe it'll get to 45,000. But um, the reason they're not making anything is because they're just calling themselves a coach. And you know, worse than the business coaches, my dear, are the, um, oh, did I just call you my dear? What am I, 95 and you're 90? Um, <laughs> Thank worse you. Than the, uh, worse than the, biz the, the business coaches are the life coaches. I mean, God help the life coaches. Who's going to pay you money, you who nobody's heard of, to help them with their, you know, you've got to figure out what your thing is. If you are a life coach who are helping people, uh, you know, because everybody else is walking all over me, yeah, I'll pay you money for that. If you're an anti-anxiety coach and I'm feeling anxious, yeah, I'll pay you for that. If you're like my client and, you know, I just came out of the closet and I don't know how to tell my wife, yeah, I'll pay you for that. But if you're just a general life coach, good luck to you, my friend. And why do you say that? I mean, I know why, but I want you to share. Why? Because, because who's going to come to you? Who's going to come to you? How are they going to hear about you? How are they going to know you exist? How are you going to write a book about it? What are you going to write a book about? You know, when I wrote my book, I was forced to really understand. That's the beauty of writing a book. You are forced to crystallize your message into this, you know, between these two covers, there's 288 pages. I'm, I can't just like, and I wanted to go scribble in the margins afterwards in the bookstore and say, oh, I just thought of another thing and another. No, you have to crystallize your message into something fixed to the point that people still buy it today and they're going to still buy it in 20 years. Hopefully, you know, it, you, you want it to be an evergreen message about an evergreen issue or an evergreen problem. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you just are jumping on the bandwagon of what everybody else is doing and you don't carve out a niche, then you're not going to get the publicity. You're not going to get noticed. You're not going to get um, the repeatability. You're not going to like Lois after meeting me today or even before meeting me. I mean, there must have been something that prompted you to invite me to be here. Right. There must have been something that stood out to you. Mm -hmm. And if I were if I just, you know, went to a networking meeting or went online and said, hi, I'm Sufit. I'm a business coach. So what? Who isn't? You know, people come to me because they know that I can teach them how to get noticed, how to get seen, how to get heard, how to get noticed, how to get known. That's why they come. They know I can teach them to add humor, or, you know, write a book that, that will be not just a book that will sit in your basement like everybody else who writes a book, but a spotlight book that will bring the spotlight to you, that will bring the media to you, that will bring speaking engagements to you. It's got to be something that makes you stand out. And as a life coach or a business coach or any other kind of coach, mm -hmm. if you don't do that, how are they going to know you exist? hundred percent. Yeah. That's why I even called myself a sales coach. I, I really focus more on the sales process and generating leads and, and having quantifiable um, results and income with that. I, I, when someone says, are you a business coach? I'm like, uh, nope. Because that, to me, that confused my brain. Like, what does that mean? It can be very, very broad, just like life coach, yeah. if, if I'm and, hearing and, what you're saying. And, and, and if you'll permit me, sorry, go finish your thought and then. No, I was just gonna say it, it there's, it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning is is uh, riches and niches and having a, a way to pull people in like through your book. I'd, I'd love to talk about your, you know, your book and how to get speaking engagements too, because I know that's another way for coaches or any profession, because we have different professions here that can, can get seen and be in the spotlight, so to speak. But if you had another thought to finish before we track towards that, because I see a lot of people who want to get, they want to write a book, but then they don't make any money. They want to speak, but then they don't make any money. So I, I'd love to, I'd well, love the to. Answer, the answer to both questions is the same. The thing I was going to say to you and, and leading into the book is exactly the same point. You said you're a sales coach, and to you, that's considered niching. Um, to me, that's only the very beginning of niching. And I know it's so obnoxious when a guest tries to, you know, turn it on the host and, and says whatever. Oh, but no, if that's I okay, because this isn't about me. This is about you. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to give my spiel right, right now. Right. There's a lot so more I depth to say, me. 
Yeah. So I would just say that, okay, sales coach is a good beginning that distinguishes you from coach and it distinguishes you from business coach. So that's a third level that sales coach. Okay. So then the next level after that would be, how can I narrow it more? So you could be the sales coach that specializes in overcoming objections, right? That that's all you do, right? That's all you do. People come to you and they say, you know, I'm great at getting the lead. I'm great at getting the appointment. I don't need to know about traffic. I don't need to, but you know what? And I've got them till the very end and then they don't close, you know, so so because I get this objection and I don't know how to deal with. So if you were the overcoming objections coach or if you were the confidence coaching sales, I mean, a lot of people call themselves that, including my daughter. Um, But if or if you were the what else could there be in sales? But, you know, or or if you specialize by audience, if you were the sales coach for chiropractors, right, by audience, that would also be helpful. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So, so there are a million, million, gazillion ways. Or if you're the sales coach only for service businesses, or you told me that you're in, uh, you know, holistic uh, uh, healing kind of thing. If you're the sales coach for for the wellness industry or the or the the holistic industry, again, an industry that oh my god needs it, right? Because they are having a, they they have so much to offer, and they 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 sp- they speak woo woo. And nobody's listening and nobody, you know, and I have clients who are in that industry too. And I say, you know, I get what you're saying because I have a little bit of an interest in that. But if you're trying to um, make this message uh, resonate, you've got to, you've got to narrow it a little bit and figure out some of this other stuff. So, uh, so then you asked me about, about the book. Um, Actually, why don't you ask me a specific question and then I'll, I'll, I'll be able to narrow my answer. Well, what I yeah, thank you for that to clarify. So, because I know it's it's a broad topic, the book, but but my point is with with writing a book or getting speaking engagements to be seen or step in the spotlight. There's so many people out there who run and do that, right? They'll spend the money, they'll do the deal, and then they don't get paid. Um, do you do you talk about right. that in the book? Can yeah. you can you share well, some? I, I don't I don't talk about it so much in the book, but I have a whole ten week book creation workshop coach uh, course where I do talk about. It. So here, here's the thing. In uh, writing a book, you have to be very clear about two things. One is who are you writing it for? Who's the reader? And number two, what do you want the reader to do as a result of reading your book? What do you want the reader to think mm-hmm. as a result of reading your book about you? Right. Because to me, the only point of writing a nonfiction book as a business vehicle, as a make lead magnet, as they call it, or a marketing vehicle, the only mm-hmm. point of that is to bring people to you ready to buy. And that's, in fact, I, I have a client who, um, uh, you know, some friend gave him my book and he's been a client for years. Another one was doing yoga and saw the book under somebody else's bed and took my course. So, so the thing is, a book is a way of taking your message and putting it in a little capsule and sending it out in the universe. People are reading it in libraries and they're reading it all over the world. And I don't have to be there. I'm talking mm-hmm. to them four to six hours in my book and I don't have to be there. So it's indisputable that that's a great way to encapsulate your marketing message. But your question to me is, what, why is it that so many people don't make money with the book or don't succeed with the book? First of all, expecting to make money directly and literally from the book is a mistake in strategy because most people don't. Oh, yeah. That, but, and that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. You know, at it's all. not what you meant, but I yeah. think some of the audience it's might important. understand. Yeah. Right? I know yeah. you yeah. get it, but I just want yeah. to make it clear to the audience. The book is a way of it's a lead. It's a, it's a it's a marketing tool that people pay for, which means they're more invested in in it. And they're going to read it if they pay for it. And um, and then once they read the book, you have to know what's the next step. If the book is the whole story, you know, it, it's a freak if, if you're going to succeed. But if the book is something which which, you know, they come after and said, defeat, I read your book. And I really want to work with you because I, you, what you said in chapter four about how to say it in 30 seconds, can you coach me about that? What you said in chapter five about how to get publicity, can you coach me on that? What you said in chapter three about branding, can you help me find my brand? Then they've already been, um, you know, we've done the foreplay, right? Like, and I didn't even have to be there. I mean, come on, how much better? Like <laughs> four to six hours and they are prepped and ready. And then they come to me and I don't even have to do that. So talk about, you know, a lever, talk about, uh, um, you know, passive. Uh, so um, you just gave me an idea that, from now on, I'm not going to call it lead magnus. I'm going to call it foreplay. So just, <laughs> just so you know. So, so um, if your book, 
And I have had so many clients who are financial advisors or coaches or whatever. If your book is generic, I'll give you an example. I have a client who's a lawyer. He came to me as a lawyer who did wills and estates. He did um, real estate deals. He did breach of contract, all these things. So first did a thing I did, I smacked him around and I said, look, dude, uh, you got an arrow from here. And he said, no, it's a feat. You don't understand. It's my business. Blah, blah, blah. It's my bread and butter. Yeah, we went through a year of that. After a year, he said, okay, I'm still paying you. I better listen to you. So he started to listen. And I said, drop everything except the one thing you want to focus on. And we dropped everything except estate litigation, right? Fighting over an estate after somebody's passed away. Great. So no more wills, no more real estate. It was hard for him, but he did it. And his business increased and his income increased. Then we start talking about writing a book. So I said, you can't just write another book about estate matters because there are 95 gazillion books about wills and estates out there and you're not going to stand out. I, so I said to him, let's look at your practice. What's the most common story you get? And the most common story he got was about brothers and sisters fighting with each other over their parents' estate, right? No, dad said I was going to get the cottage. No, you have them, whatever. So we wrote, he wrote with my help, a book. Um, about the sibling fight, about about brothers and sisters fighting with each other. He put up a blog called The Sibling Fight. He's now asked to speak on that. He's been quoted in somebody else's book on estate matters about his book. We gave it a great title called Bobby Gets Bupkis, which means Bobby gets nothing, right? Okay. And then it's a, a guide to navigating the sibling estate fight. All of that because lawyers are such um, um, it's such a conservative kind of community, right? So if he had written, you know, na just navigating sibling estate fights, which is his subtitle, but if that had been his main title, it would have been boring, mm. and nobody probably would have noticed him or read it. But now that he is so identified with this whole sibling thing, um, and the truth is, what did he turn down? He didn't turn down anything because ninety percent of these fights. I mean, who's fighting? It could be with the ex-wife or the new wife or whatever. Usually it's brothers and sisters fighting over the parents' estate. So he didn't really turn down anything, but it makes it look like he is really narrow and really specialized. And it has been working like crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, my gosh. I love that. That right there, guys, is worth a million dollars. I hope I hope you guys took note. And, and this is an opportunity, yeah, not, guys. Not Canadian because, like, that's like 17 cents. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do have one question from the audience. Let's let's um, get our Bring question because we Bring are it. wrapping it up. So, Sean, you are the lucky um, question person of the day. He says, I heard that some super high percentage of people never get past the first chapter of a book. So is it great for more lead generation as opposed to knowledge transfer? Well, you know, that's a really good question, Sean. Wait. Um, yes, I have heard that statistic, too, that, like, you know, most people don't even read one book a year or 10 books a year. And if they do, they don't get past. And you know what? I have clients who've been with me for years who have bought my book who I don't really think have ever read it. So, you know what? And then I'll, I don't care, you know, that's thousands, awesome. thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands to teach them what they, you know, is already in the book. Now, of course, we apply it to them. But then the book is read by other people who never pay me a cent and who never become my client. And they tell another hundred people about my book. They invite me to be on their podcast. Mm. They, you know, they send, oh, they send my book to other people. Okay. Right. I, I, I've been on stages because somebody influential uh, did read my book and sent it to somebody else who did or didn't. I don't know. Um, and uh, um, so I had a client make her first appointment with me the day she bought the book from me. So it wasn't as a result of reading the book, but just having the book. I mean, just, you know, if you just have it there, it kind of tells you that this is not a fly by night person. This person must know something about something. Mm -hmm. It's just, even if you use it as a paperweight, um, if it's on somebody's desk, it's like a reminder, even if the person never reads it. So Sean, I wouldn't, I mean, as a knowledge transfer, it's great for the people who are inclined to read it. For the people who aren't, it's like a sign, mm. right? It's a, it's a five and a half by eight and a half inch sign that is going to be on their bookshelf or in a library or in a bookstore or in an airport. Yeah, and social proof as well. That's right. Uh, Cialdini talks a lot about that. And actually, I'm fortunate he endorsed my book, Robert Cialdini. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, she had many endorsements, including Ivan Meisner. I mean, the list goes on. 
and on and on. And I'll definitely, um, I'll probably need to have you speak on my summit, my virtual summit that I'm having, Sufi. I, I'd love to share more of your knowledge and your wisdom with my audience. And it, however, it's it's that time. I'd love for you. I'll have your people call call your people and my people. What the hell? Um, so here we go. So tell them what can they find at spotlightsecrets.com. Again, don't forget the www.spotlightsecrets.com. What is your gift today? Um, well, it's something that's available uh, to anyone who goes to spotlightsecrets.com. It's a series, not to make it less special, but um, it's a series of tips on how to stand out and get noticed in just 30 seconds. The first 11 are that. Um, and beyond that, I'm just sure, I, after the 11, I got complaints from people, to feed how come you stopped writing me? So I started sharing more secrets after that. And now there's three years worth of it. And people resubscribe at the end of three years. And I get actual fan mail from this all the time. Um, a, a series of tips about how to stand out in business, how to stand out and get noticed in business. And the real gift is that if you go to spotlightsecrets.com and you uh, log in, there's going to be a, you have to give your name and your email, then a second form will pop up. You give your name and email and country. So you're mm -hmm. double vaccinated. You're double proofed into the thing. Um, then if you hit reply on any of these uh, emails that you receive from me, if you mention that you heard me on Lois's uh, podcast, I will reply to you directly. I will reply to you. I will, yeah, I will engage with you. So um, I, I can't promise that to, that to everybody because I get a lot of email, as you know. Uh, but if your email subject line is, I heard you on Lois's podcast, um, I will reply to you uh, personally. Thank you so much. And guys, you could also find her on LinkedIn. Um, I love her step into the spotlight LinkedIn group. So I encourage if that's okay, Sufi, that I invite them to that. If not, it's too late. So get over it. <laughs> well, you can invite them to, you can, I love, love it. Love it. You can invite them to apply. And if I like them, maybe I'll accept them. But, exactly. Um, and and I've, I've set up a short URL for that to take you straight to the group spotlightgroup.biz, B-I-Z. Okay. Which, by the way, is a tip for your audience. If you have a book, for example, um, spend the 10 bucks at GoDaddy once a year. Like for my book, it's spotlightbook.com. If, if you just set up a forward, spotlightbook.com, spotlightgroup.biz, spotlightsecrets, if you take whatever your core branding is yep. Yep. and you stick a .com on the end of that, um, then uh, it's easier to tell people because if you're on the radio or you're on a podcast, what am I going to say? Yeah, go to LinkedIn forward slash to feed forward slash group forward slash four eight one nine. Like, who can do that? One hundred percent. So I put that on there. I'll put that in the show notes. Spotlight group dot biz. One quick announcement before I have one final question for you, Sufit, as we wrap it up. I have, for those of you who took it before, it, it changed a lot of lives. Um, a lot of people, coaches, speakers, um, holistic healers, a lot of people you were talking about earlier, don't know how to have a consistent lead generation plan and sales flow process. So I put together a five-day challenge. I'm having new content. I'm having a guest speaker who coaches seven-figure coaches. And you just uh, go to lower kofi.com forward slash challenge and sign up refer all your friends it's free i haven't done a free one since march so this is the last one i'm going to do of the year because it, it, it does take a lot of time and energy but it's so much fun well, there'll be thousands of uh, dollars in giveaways and helping people generate 100 qualified leads in five days so just wanted to throw that out there to my community now august 9th through the 13th so mark your calendars and sign up at the link all right. So my last question coming back to you that I ask all of my guests is, Sufi, when you hear the phrase healthy and wealthy and wise, what does it mean for you? Ah, I got to make you think. <laughs> you know, first thing it does, I, I was actually on a podcast with almost the identical name, but, but it only had one end, not the two ends. So that's the first thing I think of. The second thing is that the healthy is, is the most important part of that because if you're healthy you are wealthy and you're wise if you take after your uh, you take care of your health so um I, I i don't focus as much on the wealthy or wise part um for me it's all about the healthy and i think you know hopefully the rest of it awesome i love it 
thank you so much. I love um, the name has a lot of meaning for me. And and then actually, guys, we're celebrating the one year anniversary on July 20th. I can't believe I forgot to put that on here. Um, July 20th is the one year anniversary of Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, guys. So take a look at all the information is at healthyandwealthyandwise.com. And again, if you saw value in this amazing interview today, please hit the share button with your community. Um, bring more people inside of the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise community. We're going to have amazing guests next week. We actually have um, my friend, uh, Lisa Filia. She's a confidence coach. So another coach um, who's going to be here talking about actually something very, very important, which is what we discovered between her and I. We have a passion for people pleasing and how to overcome that. <laughs> so bring all your people pleasers next week, Friday. Um, tune in same time, same channel. Invite them to this group. And again, thank you, Sufi, for being My here pleasure. today. My all right, guys. Until next time, here's to your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom. Bye-bye for now. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, refer a friend, and please drop me a rating or a review. If you do that, I'll reward you with a free 20-minute free coaching session on crafting your journey to your best self. Reach out to me at lois at loiskofi.com to claim your 20-minute slot. Until next time, be healthy wealthy and wise.